Good morning to everyone. My name is Christian Fafli and I'm, I'm part of the Nordic sales team. And I'm greeting you today, this morning, from North Finland, from an exciting city called Rovaniemi, a city where you can see Father Christmas, reindeers and ice bears walking on the street. Okay, we have an exciting uh, 30 minutes in front of us with the digital barriers. And Dan Merrick, who is going to be the, uh, your uh, presenter. Dan, are you ready to take over? Yep. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. And the rest of the people can also. And now I will make you the presenter. We are still waiting for the picture, but now we see your screen, so it's all yours, Dan. Okay. Give me a second. Just uh, get to the front. I do apologize. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks very much for coming on the uh, webinar this morning. Um, as Christian said, my name is Daniel Merrick. I'm from a company called Digital Barriers, and just uh, to quickly give you a, a run through of a, a few of the technology for Digital Barriers, and uh, obviously then after that we'll take some questions. So first and foremost, barriers are essentially uh, specialists in advanced surveillance and detection technologies. We are both a products manufacturer company and we are also a uh, systems integrator, maintenance provider as well. Um, and we sell a lot of Axis products, you'd be glad to know. So we're actually a, an Axis Gold channel partner and we are uh, an Axis Silver ADP. Uh, revenues of about 19 million. We are a global business. We have offices um, in various parts of the world. Our, our head office is in London in the UK and we have offices in Washington in the US, in, uh, uh, in Dubai, Singapore, South Korea and a number of development offices uh, both in the UK and also in France. Uh, we are a, a PLC so we're listed on the stock exchange and we were if you like, uh, established uh, around about 2008 and from that point we've grown by acquisition and wind forward to where we are now. We've honed down the technology companies that we've acquired uh, uh, into around about five or so different technology sets and customer base and where we focus, we have a, 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 a we're very active within the law enforcement, intelligence services, defense communities historically, um, but more so now and uh, hence why we're doing this today and why we're engaging a lot within the IP video eco communities because we're growing our activities within the commercial space and, and other sort of more conventional uh, markets that you guys will be uh, maybe more familiar with. Today what I'm going to try and focus on is really uh, three technologies, one of which I'm pretty sure a lot of you would have already heard about, which is our Safe Zone Edge Video Analytics, which is a, a certified intruder detection ACAP. I'll also touch on our TVI wireless video codec platform, which uh, is designed to allow you to get video over very constrained and variable networks uh, and mobile networks in particular and also RDC which is our unattended wireless seismic ground sensor platform which is a, a rapid deployment redeployable ground sensor platform that is battery powered um, and is again um, being sold out like the other products uh, worldwide now into a number of different sort of uh, organizations and institutions Quickly starting, BI. 
quickly give you an overview of the actual architecture for TVI. First of all, you can see on the diagram here on the left hand side is the edge devices that we have. So it's TVI is formed of a number of different types of black boxes. You'll better sort of uh, refer to them as uh, essentially encoder devices, which come in various shapes and sizes. Uh, we have some dedicated camera technologies as well. But all of these devices have got our TVI codec platform inside. Um, we have boxes that are designed for both uh, IP and for analog. Obviously, what's relevant for you guys here is obviously our IP devices. All of the devices uh, have a, uh, a mobile uh, 4G capable modem inside. We have boxes that have got storage and hard, uh, hard drives inside, for example. We do ruggedized versions for military applications and other types of remote applications. And essentially, these devices communicate back to our TVI server. Uh, the TVI server architecture allows us, uh, and that server manages the video streams, and more importantly, uh, allows for a full distribution of all of those streams back to anybody that wants to see them, whether that be back in control room scenarios, so PC-based applications, viewing applications, um, or whether it's uh, uh, viewing from mobile devices. So we support iOS and Android devices and Windows uh, mobile devices are coming on board as well. The like, attribute TVI, as I say, is the ability to get video over very constrained bandwidths. Just so that you're uh, aware here, um, I know you guys are probably thinking, well, we have the Zipstream, um, and that has brought obviously huge benefits in terms of bandwidth um, uh, reductions and, and storage reductions and so on. However, um, what we're seeing with TVI here is that it's becoming very much a complementary um, solution for your devices, um, and in particular where you have Zipstream. Uh, and, and in particular where you are maybe wanting to get your cameras back over cellular mobile networks uh, really because we have one box solutions that allow you to do that. But essentially the codec and the way that it works is that it, we ha uh, one of the major strengths of TVI is the fact that you have complete control over your bandwidth and data usage. Uh, the codec looks at the stream that is made of uh, the pipe, if you like, uh, the bandwidth that is available, and you can set your limits to make sure that you are always staying within those limits. Um, it's really the, the advantage of not being constrained, if you like, by the limitations of H.264. Um, and the benefits that you have with that is that, uh, and a lot of users that we have, for example, British Telecom, BT in the UK, that now have TBI as their value proposition for uh, the town centre scheme market, that they use TBI as, their, as the basis of their solutions. Uh, and one of the key reasons there is the fact that they can forward predict the data usage, therefore they can set service levels and sell those service levels to their customers accordingly. In terms of the market share and where we're active, first and foremost, law enforcement and defense are the real sort of historical ones for obvious reasons. We have pretty much uh, all of the intelligence services, certainly UK and the US and a number of other regions worldwide that are using TBI as their platform of choice for covert surveillance, for um, other types of uh, vehicle-based applications, getting video live streaming back from the vehicles and so on. Obviously for force protection purposes when special forces, for example, are on operate, in operation, getting video back and so on from uh, all manner of different environments. But um, transportation, again, the vehicle type of applications um, and, and, and trains, for example, getting video back from those types of, uh, uh, of, of applications. Now we're really growing uh, activities within the commercial space. Uh, we've got numbers of, of organizations now that are starting to use TVI because of bandwidth constraints for remote locations, for example. 
Um, safe cities, as I've touched on briefly, town centre schemes, British Telecom in the UK that are going out and, and doing a lot of the work there, uh, getting cameras into locations. Really where you have uh, uh, a need to put cameras into locations where maybe there is not fixed infrastructure and you want to make use of your mobile cellular networks to get video back and uh, maybe there's a, there, there are cost benefits for doing that rather than putting in fiber cabling or dedicated uh, wireless networks and so on. Again, critical infrastructure, critical national infrastructure, we're doing a lot of work in that space now. We have TV operating in nuclear power stations for rapid deployment and redeployable cameras. Uh, we are working with water treatment sites as well, uh, where they're looking to put TBI to monitor very, very sensitive water treatment assets, um, and that's in very, very large volumes as well, uh, thousands of, of, of locations for certain uh, uh, water treatment type customers. You guys, uh, this particular device here is probably the one that will be the most relevant. Um, this is our IP450. Um, it supports obviously your range of uh, access cameras. It supports four channels, four cameras. You can actually extend that to more by in, uh, introducing a switch into the equation. But essentially it's designed around a four camera solution. Um, it has hard disk on board. It has obviously the L LTE 4G cellular modem in there. It can also have Wi-Fi connectivity as well. It also is vibration resistant, so we do a lot of vehicle applications here. Um, and we're putting this into yep, vehicle transportation applications and lots of uh, um, remote applications and, and redeployable applications as well. So if you guys have got applications where you need to get video back over, particularly over, say, cellular networks, um, or if it's SATCOM, for example, or you've just got customers that have got very, very constrained uh, networks and, and, and connections to different sites, then this may well be something of interest. But as, a, as just briefly touched on there, you can see that we're getting video back to down sub 10 kilobits per second. We're able to record the native high resolution HD video at the same time and retrieve that at any, at any given moment. So that's a key piece there. Just um, finish some integration with Milestone here. Uh, Milestone, are go Milestone are going global with the, uh, if you like, the, um, the push around the TVI integration. A lot of this was prompted by a lot of work we're doing with intelligent services where they are also present and the need to have, or for the, for the intelligent services in the US to get their TVI streams viewable within Milestone. So just to quickly click on the, uh, the link here, you'll see if I quickly go to the, uh, the, the, the Milestone press release that went out just last week. And I think we've got in the region of about 20 or so mar milestone marketing guys now getting behind this. Just bear with me a second. Must have a slightly slow network today, guys. Okay, there you go. So just very quickly, the milestone release. You'll see, I'm sure a lot of you will see these milestone PR press releases that are coming through, but this is the one regarding uh, TVI. So nicely tagged with Milestone enables video to boldly go where no video has gone before. Anyway, just moving on. Next product set which would be in, of, of interest I think to uh, some of your eco partners. Um, RDC, our seismic ground sensor platform is made up, if you like, as you can see here, some images that are coming through. We, we sell kits for this uh, in the main. Um, the ground sensors, you can see are these screws that you can see here, which at the top have got a seismic ground sensor. They are screwed into the ground. They take a standard D-cell battery, and that battery can last, uh, and that you know, what we call a sensor node can last out in the field for a six plus months. Um, we are using them in a number of different types of applications. 
terms of detection ranges, one node, as you can see here, for a human being, you can have up to about 25 meters and up to, for a vehicle for up to around about 100 meters as well, all depending on the types of environment these are going into. The nodes are basically uh, set up when you install them, set up their own mesh network, and they self-heal that network as well, so they all communicate. And as you can see on the architecture diagram here, the nodes um, communicate back to a master node, and then from that master node, you then have uh, whatever communications device to bring that alarming data um, back over whatever type of communication link that you have. In this case here, we're using TBI. In most of our installations, we use our TBI platform. It also means we can connect our video into this uh, setup, allowing you to have integrated pan, tilt, and zoom cameras so that when you get a detection on a seismic node, you can have your cameras move into position. Again, because of the uh, capabilities that we have with TBI, we can bring that back over the limited bandwidth links over SATCOM as well, uh, bring that back into the TBI architecture, which allows you to then have those alarms and that video back to mobile devices as well as PC command control center type applications. Just quickly, just to sort of uh, summarize on that one there, it's really covert salute solutions that we're, we're using these for. We have got them installed into a number of different types of commercial sites. We're doing a lot of renewables, energy applications, so solar farms are now starting to use this solution. We have it going into, as I say, the work we're doing with the nuclear power stations and the, the high risk, high security uh, sites. A lot of applications where there's construction going on and where, in particular, they are, the, the perimeters and the boundaries are forever moving and they really want to get perimeter PIDs, intrusion detection, going into locations which potentially are going to change and this allows them to very quickly deploy and redeploy their intruder detection solutions. As I say, it's a self-healing solution. So it rebuilds its network should, should, for example, battery go down or if the, uh, the, the wireless connections, like the links between the nodes are not strong enough, it can rebuild the network uh, uh, accordingly. Uh, obviously rapidly deployable, so you putting these solutions out, putting nodes in to the ground and getting them set up is very, very quick and easy to do. No cabling, so very low risk installation and also low risk in terms of uh, damage or vandalism, etc., and so on, so forth. Now moving on to, to the safe zone edge quickly here. Then uh, this, I'm sure you guys, uh, a lot of you guys, will be aware with, aware of. We've we launched safe zone edge last year, back in around about May, and since that point, we've we've had considerable success. Uh, and it's growing. It's continuing. Uh, the product is is evolving. We've got some some new things coming through the coming uh, months too. First of all, Safe Zone Edge, um, an ACAP, therefore it is dedicated to the axis range of, uh, of, of cameras and encoders. It comes with four key intrusion detection scenarios or rules as well as a standard, so you're not having to buy a license for each type of rule, you get it as, uh, as part of the that the license, there is one part code, one price, and that's that. It's designed obviously for you know uh, reliable alarming. I'll come on a little bit to, to regards to the reliability in a moment. Obviously integrated with the usual VMS platform, so we're really leveraging the Axis uh, native alarm outputs uh, in order to do the alarm outputs into all of your usual standard video uh, management systems. Um, we have particular sort of uh, slightly extended capabilities with the likes of Milestone and Genetech. Therefore, you have things like metadata overlays and metadata integration with those platforms. Simple pricing, simple maintenance, and so on. Really designed around that simplicity. Um, we won the Security Excellence Awards in November with this product, which was the Intruder Detection Product of the Year and the External deterrent product of the year and since its inception we've sold now over 3,200 licenses into a into a very wide uh, range of different types of user 
um, cases and, and, and markets. Obviously, the high security government and CNI sites um, and commercial kind of applications, perimeter detection, and so on. We're just doing uh, some stadiums in the UK. We're doing the Twickenham Stadium, which you guys might be familiar with, where they host all of the, the rugby and we have the World Cup rugby there as well. Uh, and finally enough, retail stores and chains, chains of stores is, is a massive, massive area of, uh, of success for us. Um, since uh, uh, going out with Safe and Edge, we now have Safe and Edge operating in uh, major chains of supermarkets in the UK, uh, into home furnishing store chains, into um, electrical, uh, PC World, Dixon's Group for example, many, many chains of stores there as well. So we've really hit a sweet spot with that. In terms of support, we cover right across the range of the Axis, uh, ArtPec, uh, and, and our other processor type devices. Obviously designed specifically for your range and no one else's currently. And we uh, have also very recently just completed the AVHS integration as well, so it's fully AVHS compatible. And we have a new version of Safe Zone Edge, which is going to be the Safe Zone Arc, as in the alarm receiving centers. Um, a new solution which is designed with uh, with AVHS in mind, and that's really down to the fact that we're finding the remote monitoring centres and the arcs out there uh, are, uh, are really keen on this particular product. Um, AVHS is giving them the ability to do all of the remote calibration and configuration, and also we're going to be selling the AVH version on a monthly subscription basis. Uh, and we have also recently signed Observit, which I'm sure you guys, and some of you guys will be aware of, being that they are a, a Swedish-based company. We are now on the Observit cloud platform with the AVH, AVHS version of Safe Zone Edge as well. Reliability, the, the key, if you like, attribute, and the, probably the most important uh, attribute um, and what we really wanted to achieve was, was the best level and the highest level of reliability and performance. We, as you, uh, a, lot, a lot of you will be aware, we've got the eyelids uh, primary detection approval or certification, which is a UK uh, recognised certification, the UK government, um, and there are very, very few video analytics applications on the edge that actually have attained the eyelid primary detection certification. Kind of visualize that in terms of performance. This is an example of some testing that has been done in real in the real world with a you know a complex scene of, of foliage movement and so on where we compared safe zone edge against a video motion detection and uh, a, a non-certified video analytics as well. Just really to give you an idea, really mainly around the VMD in terms of the level of false alarming that you get compared to Safe Zone Edge. <clears throat> and that's really you know, what brings the value of video analytics over and above the standard VMD applications. Simplicity, again, is a is important to us with regards to this product and what we really try to strive to achieve. So simple, we've, what we mean by that is that we've actually introduced some very cute auto operation app, uh, um, features and being able to do that on multiple cameras in one hit. So whereas other platforms will take potentially an hour plus per camera to sort of set up analytics, you're looking at once you've started to play around and you're familiar with the application, you can be setting up uh, Safe Zone Edge on a camera in 10, 15 minutes. It's really genuinely that quick and easy to do, and you'll get fantastic results from that as well, just really by uh, the way in which we, we, we have uh, introduced the, the calibration process. I won't explain that now, but please do come back to me if there is uh, anything uh, that you want to talk around, and I can go into more detail um, separately. Affordability stands today, Stone Edge, 
one license, no fees or anything like that. Everything that you get within that one license um, it, and, and the MSRP is 199 euros. Um, we are, just so that you are aware, we are going to be introducing a slight uplift on the price within the next few months. So the customer base will be pre-worn on that relatively soon, but it's marginal. It's probably in the region of around about a 10 to 15 percent increase, and that is all. Quickly, just going through the usual things that you'd expect. Um, I know that I've, we've got like two minutes to go here, but just uh, what are we detecting with Safe Zone Edge? There won't be any real eureka moments here, but all of the things that you would expect, being able to monitor you know, all of the, the, the human beings in all of the different composures, um, obviously the different types of camera devices, whether it be color, low light, infrared, thermal imaging, obviously working in complex scenes as well. We also work in marine environments, which is inherently difficult to do. Um, there are limitations there, but certainly in, in, in a number of applications, where we are doing that. Importantly, I think here is what an edge ignores, what it can filter out. So shadows um, and lighting changes, headlights from cars, for example, um, lots of you know other movement in the scene. Essentially, Safe Zone Edge and the uh, analytics engine, the algorithms are specifically designed to look for human beings or vehicles and then filter out anything else. So all of the usual things that you would expect, weather conditions, all of the different sort of conditions that you want to filter out, background movement, foliage and so on and so forth. Fusion across the Nordics. Um, are an EET, our setup and our ordering, and we're doing you know good business through these guys. Uh, we'd like it to be better, and hopefully you can help with that. In the UK, we have a number of other distributors. We have other, other distributors elsewhere in Europe as well. Very the safe and edge side of things, and um, hopefully that's kind of explained it a bit more for those that are not familiar with it. Very quickly, just to fin finish off here, we've just got some basic kind of kits and applications where we're using our technologies and your technologies. So using our IP450 device with our ground sensing, we're also uh, now, bring, well, we have been now for some time using our, your thermal imaging cameras for some solar farm installations and your large uh, 8721-22 PTZ camera, the, the beast as I call it. and that's been working very, very well, providing some really good um, uh, com combined sort of detection uh, solutions, but where we're bringing in some added benefit of getting all of the video alarming data and, and the video streaming back over cellular networks and so on. We work with the law enforcement guys, again, where we're using your cameras in Convert scenarios, um, but also in a lot of vehicle applications as well. But um, uh, there's a number of police forces now worldwide where we're putting the IP450 into vehicles with with your with your camera devices. Uh, some large projects that are going on at the moment with that. All sort of quirky applications um, in the UK. We have the what we call the, the Boris bike uh, cycle hire around London, and we protect the cycle hire stands. We have your cameras covertly mounted within a uh, kind of a, 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 some street furniture, and we have our IP450 there monitoring, um, obviously uh, on the cellular network. Um, quite an interesting one. We're doing some big uh, applications. We're working with the UK access team at the moment on bus shelters. Uh, where the bus shelters are going digital and they want to have cameras within the bus shelters uh, to monitor for public safety purposes but also to monitor the advertising, the digital advertising because when that gets damaged or vandalized it's loss in revenue and they want to make sure that they can replace any smashed advertising glass very quickly 
and that's thousands and thousands of locations we're looking at there, which is uh, really encouraging. So that's a lot of access cameras and a lot of TVI technology as well. So we're we're really pleased with how that one's looking. That really, Tom brings us to an end. Sorry, it's a bit late. I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, are there any questions at all? Yes, we have one. There, we have. Uh... Uh, Paul is asking, uh, what object can you detect? What, what, sorry? What objects can you detect? There is a question here. Say so with, what, with, what, with what product, sorry? There is not mentioned here any product. Okay. Ah, we're, safe, we're zone. About safe zone. Safe zone. With safe zone. Yeah. Human beings, obviously. That's what we're looking for, and obviously vehicles, and you can uh, uh, either detect both or you can um, only detect one off, so you can tip, there's a tick box for that. It's really, uh, so that's what you're looking for, that's what you're detecting on, it's really about what we're ignoring, and as I've gone through there, you know, it's the filtering of the external effects, which is really key, making sure that you're keeping your nuisance alarms to an absolute minimum, and, and, and that's really why the remote monitoring stations and the alarm receiving sensors have, have really got behind this product. Um, the eyelids certification really does give that credibility because that certification process, that's exactly what it's all about. It tests your reliability versus your nuisance alarm filtering. Chris is asking if there is any trial version for safe zone. Um, yes, there is absolutely. Um, we, uh, if you want to email me, I will get you the trial license uh, email over. It's a very simple three-step uh, um, process. And it's all explained on that email. And Paul it's is also just so you know, we've actually got that as a sixty-day, sixty-day trial currently as well. Paul is asking about animals. What happens with safe zone on animal with animals? Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So we 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 are highly confident of the capability to filter out the vast majority of of animals. Um, like any video analytic, you cannot guarantee that you are going to get a hundred percent success. It really does depend on the particular the size of the animal in some cases but really distances and ranges as well with that but you will get a considerable level of filtering of animals using safe zone edge in the main um, and 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 yeah that's that's really that so we, we, we're using it in environments where that is a a, a, a a real prerequisite for that so solar farms for example where we have sheep grazing on the land uh, and we are still getting probably anything between maybe uh, a, a few a few false alarms a day from an installation where we have maybe upwards of 15 to 20 cameras okay any other questions here no, I think we answered all uh, all questions. Or you answered? Okay, here's another one. Uh, okay, it's a product manager from Observit who wants to tell tell that they are they are they are partners of yours. Well, we yes. already know that. We already know that. Thank you. Some extra advertising is always good. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. Any other questions? Obviously not. Then guys, I thank you, Dan, especially for taking these 30 minutes and giving us a fantastic introduction to, to your products and your solutions. And I want to thank all the attendants of uh, taking their time. And uh, we will meet again in next Friday, uh, again at 9 o'clock Central European time. Until then, I wish you a very nice Friday. 
and uh, happy weekend. Thank you and bye-bye. Yeah.